It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. For this video, I'm gonna respond to a series of tweets that was done by Dr. Susanna. I'm not really sure if this person's a real doctor or not, but I found this account the other day because I saw a series of tweets in regards to Spain and I figured why not respond to this series of tweets. Now the series of tweets were about basically how like Spain colonized the Americas and various countries that we know today. However, as she further went on and on in a thread, I feel as though that she went off the deep end, like super badly. Now, honestly, the idea of talking about Spain and colonization is a very complex topic. Obviously, I am not some sort of expert when it comes down to this whole entire topic. However, all my sources for this whole entire video are linked in the description box down below. So without further hesitation, let us begin. PSA, Spain did a genocide. Source, I exist. Spaniards know they have blood in their hands. That's 100% why they get so defensive about their history and start making things up. Before I respond to the first tweet, I first want to state that when it comes down to people being guilty of past wrongdoings, I don't think every single person alive today from that group or whatever is guilty from the past. So that means if there were black people who enslaved other black people, that today black people are not guilty. It's the same thing for other groups. If there are like Chinese people who enslaved Chinese people, they're not guilty of the past. And so I don't think that Spaniards by default have blood on their hands from today because today's Spaniards are different in comparison to Spaniards in the past. So whatever kind of stuff that Spaniards did in the past, today's Spaniards are not guilty. So today's Spaniards are not guilty of colonization. Is it true that past Spaniards are guilty of colonization? Yes. And it's not just the Spaniards from the past. It was also the Portuguese with Brazil. It was also the case with England, with various parts of Canada, United States, and the Caribbean. And of course, the rest of the whole entire freaking planet. There was also the case with the French. And so many people from European countries were also guilty of colonization. However, not every single person alive today are guilty from the past actions. And so it's very important to me at least to not, you know, make sure that everyone feels guilty of past wrongdoings because obviously the person alive today is not the exact same person from the past. As far as this whole entire idea of Spain doing genocide onto the land of the Americas, I'm not particularly sure about that. Because the main thing when I think about genocide is the intent of wanting to wipe out the entire population with some malintent, right? And so basically for the case of Nazi Germany, we know for a fact that Hitler openly hated Jews. He had concentration camps against Jews. He made people suffer. His whole entire intent was to wipe out the entire Jewish race. However, it's not the same case for Spain because I don't think I found any type of evidence whatsoever to actually suggest that Spaniards from the past actually wanted to wipe out the entire native population. For starters, it's the illness factor. As we all know, like illness is a factor that the Europeans brought over to the Americas. And so many people brought like the smallpox and stuff and many natives also died because of the spread of diseases. So I don't think from that factor when it comes down to diseases that the Spaniards are actually guilty of wrongdoing when it comes down to going to the Americas to find new land. Also, let's look at the data when it comes down to the mestizos and the indigenous people. Now, it has a list of country, the total indigenous populations in the thousands, and the total amount of people within the population. So, at number one is Bolivia, and of course it has over 6,000 indigenous population, and they make up 62.2% of the population. Then of course, after Bolivia is Guatemala, which has like over 5,000 native people, and they make up about 41% of the population. Number three is Peru, which has about 7,000 people within the native population, and they make about 24% of the whole entire population. 
At number five is Panama. At number six is Chile. Number seven is Nicaragua. Number eight is Ecuador. Number nine is Honduras. Ten is Colombia. Eleven is Venezuela. Twelve is Uruguay. Thirteen is Argentina. Fourteen is Costa Rica. Fifteen is Paraguay. Sixteen is Brazil. And the last one on the list is, of course, El Salvador. And what about the American Indians for the United States? Well, according to the data, at least 0.9% of the U.S. population, or 2.9 million people, identify as American Indian or Alaska Native, while 1.7% of the population, or 5.2 million people, identify as American Indian or Alaska Native alone, or in combination with one other race. So, if you compare Latin American countries with, of course, United States, it seems as though that the United States actually has the least amount of Native Americans in our country in comparison to the other Latin American countries. So my main question then becomes, well, if the Spaniards actually did a humongous genocide, they did like a really, really terrible job, because it seems as though that the former British colonies like United States and Canada have the lowest percentage when it comes to the native population, data-wise, while the rest of the former Spanish territory have the largest amount of people who are actually native or mestizo. As most people know, Christopher Columbus went to the Americas to the island of Hispaniola, which today is modern-day Haiti and also Dominican Republic. And as most people know, he was infamous for trying to kill off the natives, trying to torture the natives, and so, when news first came out about this in Spain, Queen Isabella of Spain actually wrote out against him and ordered him not to kill off the natives in the Dominican Republic and actually treat them as human beings. And here's the exact same letter that I'm going to share you guys because I find it to be really interesting. You are to be work vigilancy in those things that pertain to the service of God and ensure divine services are conducted with the proper respect and order, because it is our will that the Indians will be converted to the holy Catholic faith and that the souls be saved, you ought to take care, without using any force against them, that the priests are there to teach and demolish them for this purpose with much love so they can be converted as quickly as possible. You are to see that all the vecinos and residents of the upset lands and mainland submit to you personally and with their dependence and that they will obey you as our governor in everything you order on our behalf. And you are to ensure that all love and peace and justice treating all equally without exception. You are to ensure that the Indians are well versed and can walk away safely throughout the country without anyone assaulting or robbing them or doing them any other harm. Not only did Spain try to go out against the mistreatment of natives during this time period, but also Spain not just wrote once, but twice a letter in a law in favor of the treatment of natives by granting them rights as Spaniards because they want to treat them as Spanish citizens and also to convert them to the Catholic faith. And also when it comes down to languages, they also went, went as far as to preserve the original languages of the land having entire dictionaries to teach the missionaries how to speak the local language of the natives there. So it seemed to me at least, by under any stress of the definition of genocide, that the Spanish government did not want to genocide the entire population, and of course the data today supports that fact. Now this is the part where she just really, really just show off her ignorance. Challenge. Name a famous part of Spanish culture that isn't stolen. I'll wait. Well, for starters, the flamingo is an example of actually not being stolen from anywhere else. a matter of fact, the flamingo was actually started in Andalusia, if I'm not mistaken. There was also the case of the Spanish guitar, where basically like the guitar that we know today that's the Spanish guitar comes from Spain. There's also the concept of the dollar. Like, we all know that we have the dollars in the United States, but the concept of the dollar comes directly from Spain. And so that's at least three different things that I could tell you right now that's actually truly original from Spain. We officially entered death threat territory 
again, all I said was that Spain did a genocide. And of course, underneath the tweet, it says, Tus Muertos. To show you guys just how stupid this tweet is, I have to teach you guys like a little bit of Spanish, like a quick Spanish lesson. I know for a fact that most people watching this video probably took at least two years of Spanish. And yes, I'm talking about you all the way in the back. You also probably took two years of Spanish and you probably did not know anything else other than hello, goodbye, and how are you? That's the only phrases that most Americans actually know. So don't lie to yourself when you watch this video that you don't know how to say other stuff, right? But when it comes down to this whole entire tweet, it's so stupid because it's not a death threat in the slightest. Now, Spaniards and also Spanish-speaking people in general are very, very known for cutting off words to make it even shorter depending on the dialogue, especially like in the Spanish Caribbean dialects. They like to cut off symbols and they also cut off words all the time. Like for example, like uh, para, it means like four and also two. However, like in the Caribbean, they say pa. They actually say pa in the Caribbean. I'm not even joking either to say para. Another example of this it's the idea of saying the word freaking like, como estas, right? Now, como estas is almost like, you know, how are you, right? However, some people in the Caribbean say stuff like, como tu ta? Como tu ta? I'm not even joking, like, people actually say, como tu ta? It's like, <laughs> they try to cut out the word at the end of it. And so they actually do that too. Basically, the entire insult is actually, mi cargo en tus muertos. Mi cargo en tus muertos. Basically, that means I shit on your dead relatives, right? Now, it's one way to say, like, you know, fuck off, go fuck yourself, right? Now, the very short way of saying that is tus muertos. So, basically, that whole entire tweet refers to mi cargo en los muertos, meaning I shit on your dead relatives, right? So, that means that he was actually insulting you. He said I was shit on your dead relatives. He is not saying that, of course, like, you know, I want to actually kill you and blah, 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 blah. He did not say that. It's not a death threat. And to say that it's actually a death threat is actually detrimental to our education in this country. Because, again, we only had two years of Spanish in this whole entire nation. And so it's kind of embarrassing to actually show like how people are just so dumb on this issue. Me, this is a death threat. Spaniards. No, they're just shitting on your dead ancestors, who they killed on your tweet about genocide, where they're supporting genocide and threatening to kill people. No, dude. Just no, 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 no. Like, this is just a figure of speech. They're literally not shitting on your ancestors, man. Like, Spaniards is like full of these expressions that are not meant to be taken literally. It's just basically saying like, fuck you or go fuck yourself. A very strong way of saying that, man. So you have no idea what you're talking about. This whole entire thread is like super stupid, man. But anyway, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below and I'll talk to you guys next time. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.